Hello, my name is Keith Rucker. Today we're going to give something to try out here. This is uh, quite honestly something that uh, I'm not very much of an expert in at all. In fact, I have very little experience in what I'm going to be trying to do today. I have played around with this a time or two in the past and I've had some fair luck with it in the past, so we're going to give it a shot. And what that is, is we're going to try to use some heat straightening or flame straightening uh, to straighten out uh, the shaft on this uh, arbor here. Uh, so, just a little bit of background. This is a shaper spindle. Uh, a friend of mine sent this to me, actually had me make a, a new one uh, that was for a smaller size um, a cutter. This goes on a wood shaper uh, for cutting profiles, uh, you know, having different moldings or whatever. Uh, so, a cutter goes on this sh uh, shaft, it's actually going up on the machine, spins real fast, cuts wood. Uh, this is an inch and a quarter uh, arbor here. Uh, I made a three quarter inch for him. He didn't have one. You can just take these off and put on different size of uh, spindles. So uh, when we were put this one on here and looked at it uh, out here on the end, I'm getting a good bit of run out. In fact, out here on the end, we're getting about 60 thousandths run out. Uh, down in here closer where the cutters are actually usually running, it's a lot less, but still, in my opinion, it's more than what we should have. So. You know, I, I was kind of, you know, what, what are we going to do? Well, how are we going to fix this? And my, my options are I can either try to straighten this one out or I can make another new one. Uh, at least that's the two options that I came up with and I'm comfortable with. So uh, I decided that before I go to the trouble of just making a new one, uh, that we would try to straighten this one first. And uh, we're going to use the, uh, the flame uh, straightening technique of doing that. Again, um, I will just say up front, this, I am not an expert in this area. I've played with it before. Uh, I've had some luck with it. Uh, we're going to try it. Quite honestly, I may scrap this piece. And if it doesn't work, you know, I really haven't lost anything because as it stands right now, uh, it's, it's not usable. So we're going to try to salvage this by using heat straightening. So the idea of heat straightening is, is that you find the high spot on the shaft or you find where the bend is on the shaft. Uh, and then you can come in there uh, with a torch, touch it off. That's going to cause the, the metal in that area to expand. You cool it back down, but when it expands, it actually bends it and reshapes it. And uh, so we're going to use the indicator to map this out, find where those, that high spot is, hopefully come in here and do this. We may have to do it a couple of times to get it all averaged out. Uh, but hopefully, we're, like I said, we're going to be able to save the shaft. If we're not successful, I haven't lost anything because this shaft is pretty much uh, not usable in the shape that it's in. If we can salvage it, great. Uh, if we don't salvage it, well, you know, again, we haven't lost anything. We're going to give it a try. So let's get going. All right. Hopefully, uh, you guys will be able to see the indicator in here and um, see what we're working with. So I'm going to start out. We're just going to come in here fairly close to this shoulder and um, I'm going to spin this around and see what we got. So as you can see, you know, that's my, that's my low and uh, you know, if you're not familiar with an indicator, just you can pull it out. So if I pull this toward me, in other words, it's, it's getting higher, the needle's moving to the right, their way I know the low is to the left. So you, if, if you don't know your indicator that well, it's an easy way just to confirm is you can just see which way the needle's moving. But that's my low. I'm going to roll this around and uh, I'll just do that again. There's my low on zero. Yeah, so the high is somewhere right along in there. And just looking at the, in, the indicator, that's about five and a half thousandths. So let me get a, something. I'm going to mark that spot. Hang on one second. All right, so this is our high spot right here. I'm just going to kind of circle my indicator and I'm just going to write out here beside it. Or actually that's about plus six. All right. And then I'm going to move my indicator out to here. Again, we just go through the same process. There's my low. Roll it around. You know, there's my high right there. Uh, we're just going to call that, that's about ten and a half thousandths. Just call that plus 10. We'll do another one right here. All 
right there's my low all right so right there we're at about plus 17 and we'll go right here to the edge of the uh, the threads I'm just confirming more than anything else right now that the run out on this is in one direction and so far it has been you know we're not having multiple bends in this so we only have one bend in it so here uh, that's about plus 23 and really can't do it over the threads very well but we can come out here to the very end on this tip here and get an idea there. That's a smaller diameter. Um, and out here, you know, we're, that's 54 thousandths of an inch right there. So as you can see, as you get out on this, the, um, the run out just gets greater as you go along. So what this is telling me is, is that more than likely there's only one bend in this shaft and that's down here very close to the bottom. So something happened, maybe the spindle crashed at some point, uh, had some stress put on it, you know, I don't know, maybe it dropped and fell off the shelf and hit the floor and, you know, it hit right there and it just, it just sprung a little bit. Down here close to the base, it's not off by far, but as you move out farther toward the end, uh, the, the run out is exaggerated. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm basically going to come in here. This is my high spot. We're going to take the torch. We're going to touch it off right there, heat that up in just a, that one tiny spot right there, and uh, then cool it off, and then we're going to measure it again and uh, see how far it moved. Uh, and I'm, I'm not going to get it real hot. I'm going to try to go slow with this. You know, if it was way off, I'd probably just get it, you know, really, really hot and then cool it down. But I'm, I'm going to ease into this because, again, I'm not an expert in this, and uh, I, I, I'm just, I'd rather take it easy and ease into it with a little bit more experience. Some of you guys out there that have more experience in this probably could just go do this right off the bat, and, uh, but I'm going to kind of ease into it, and uh, hopefully we're going to be able to straighten this out. I th again, I think it's fairly easy. It's just got one bend here, and hopefully we can fix this without too much trouble. Before we get into this, I was just thinking while I was off camera there, I probably need to... Uh, make just a few more comments about the setup that I have here. For those that are regular subscribers to my channel, uh, you probably recognize this setup. You know, we uh, actually uh, turned this little arbor here uh, to make the new arbor that I made. So this is just a stub arbor that we did. This is an exact copy of what's on the shaper. I've got this all uh, indicated in so it's running true in both this direction and on this face because this comes in and, and seats on that face, that flat down there. And I know that this is running true on my lathe. Uh, and you know, I, this is what I've decided since I already had this set up from my last job and uh, it's basically the same part. I decided that I would just use this setup here to turn it because I know that I want the shaft running perfectly true running on this arbor. You know, this was a different shaft. You know, you may have centers on each end and you could turn it or put it between centers. Uh, you know, ideally on, uh, not, not on your lathe because you really don't want to get a lot of heat necessarily around your lathe. Ideally it'd be on a, you know, on a, on a stand that has centers on it uh, for, for working on shafts. In this case, you know, I'm set up to do a lathe. Uh, I am going to come in here with a torch. You know, I, I don't expect to get a lot of heat on my lathe. We're going to just real quickly get some heat right here. I know some people out there are probably going to scoff at me and say that I shouldn't do this. Well, this is my call. Um, I, this is what I'm going to do, and I'm comfortable with this. On a smaller machine, uh, on your machine, whatever you may not be, and that's fine, but this is how we're set up to do this. Uh, so. Again, what we're going to do is I'm going to come in here with that torch. I'm going to put it right there on this spot. I'm not trying to heat up the whole shaft. I'm trying to heat up this one spot right here, very localized heating. The shaft is bent. It's, you know, it's, it's moving up in this direction. So if you, if the, you were to look at the run out, this is the high spot right here. So it's moving uphill. 
when I heat this up, what's going to happen is it's going to make a cone-shaped uh, heat in there, and basically it's going to hinge over. As you heat that top, it's going to expand the metal, it's going to hinge over, and in the process of hinging over, this high spot is going to move down. Okay, so that's all we're doing right here. We're using heat to actually move the metal a little bit. And uh, so again, we're going to come in, uh, we're only wanting to heat up a spot, maybe the size on this right here, maybe the size of the, a dime or maybe even a little bit smaller than that to get that little cone shaped right. We just want to get it hot right there on the surface. We're not trying to get the whole shaft red hot, just one little tiny spot. So let's get going. All right, it's red right there. That may not be enough, but we're gonna start there. Uh, we'll measure it. We may have to do this again. Now I've just got a little bucket of water here and we're just going to cool this off. Okay, let's see what we did. I've got my indicator. I actually moved it out here. This is a mark, and when I wiped it off with the water, some of this came off, but I could still read that when I put it back on. That's plus 17 right here. And uh, just show you what we got. We roll around here again, put it on the, the zero, roll around to my high, and we're at about plus 13. So, you know, did we get to our target? No. Did we move it in the right direction? Yes. We moved it about four thousandths on that, that heat. So I'm going to do this again, but this time I'm going to put some more heat here. Again, I'm taking this a little bit slow and easy uh, just because I don't want to go too far. Uh, and I'm kind of just seeing what's going to happen when I do this. This is a lot of trial and error here. This is not something I have done a lot of, so I'm, I'm taking my time and easing into this. So we're just going to repeat that same process we just did. Uh, this time I'm going to put a little bit more heat on it and uh, see if we can move some more of this, uh, this uh, uh, run out out of it. All right, let's see what we got this time. So we roll that around, and we're still about where we were. So um, we're going to put some more heat on it. All right, sorry, folks. My camera cut off in that process, and I, you missed a little bit of action. I apologize. But basically all I've done is I've reheated this thing up here in the same spot. Uh, I did it two cycles. And again, I didn't realize the camera had shut off, but sorry. But just want to show you where I'm at. Uh, so right now, you know, we're up here. This was earlier running about plus 19, I think right about in here. So we'll start right there. And you can see we've got this down to where we're running right there about six thousandths run out. And let's go out here to the very end. Remember down here, I think we were 56. I can't remember exactly, uh, but it was between 50 and 60 thousandths, and we're about 13 and a half thousandths out there. So I'll be honest with you, right now I'm to the point where I can live with this. Um, yeah, 16 thousandths on the end is probably a little bit more than what I would like, but. The truth of the matter is, is on this machine, when you stack shaper cutters in here, they're going, they're all going to be down in this area down here, and we're running seven thousandths out down here. And on a woodworking piece of machinery, um, that's 
pretty darn good. Uh, that, that's that's going to be good enough. So we've taken most of the run out out of this shaft now, out of this uh, spindle. I'm happy with it. Uh, we're going to call it good. Uh, I think I've salvaged this. I think Carl's going to be happy with this. I hope Carl's happy with it. If not, uh, we can still make another one. So right now, uh, my next step is, as long as we got on the lathe, I'm going to turn this on. We're just going to take some uh, emery cloth and polish this. Uh, you get this discoloration down here uh, where it turns blue. Uh, that should come right off with some emery cloth. We'll clean it all up and uh, this shaft will be look brand new and ready to go. Alright, final thing I want to do now is, uh, this is just an inch and a quarter uh, spacer off of my milling machine arbor, but I just want to put this on here and make sure that the cutters are going to fit. You know, that's a good tight fit. Um, I'm happy with that. I think Carl's going to be happy with that. So, I think we've salvaged this. Uh, we do still have to uh, make a nut for this. He did not have a nut for this one, so when we're making the other nut, we'll go ahead and make this one too. Um, this uh, Acme thread up here though is an odd size pitch. If I remember right, it's seven threads per inch um, and I can't find a insert uh, anywhere for seven threads per inch Acme. They go to six to eight. Uh, so I'm going to probably have to grind one out of high speed steel uh, to cut that internal thread. So we'll get around to that in another video, but for the heat straightening I think we're good to go. and. Uh, Thank you all for subscribing. Thank you for watching.